bar graph, histogram and pie chart. Hello children. In previous classes, we have learnt about various methods to represent data of any event. In this chapter, we will learn about the same. Let's start with the basic, that is data. Data is a collection of information in the form of numerical figures regarding different aspects of life. For example, there are 60 students in a class. During an annual day, all the students participate in the activities such as dance, music and sports. So the data regarding this is as shown. We can say that 20 students participated in dance, 25 students participated in music and 15 students participated in sports. Observation Each entry or item collected as a numerical figure in the given data is called an observation. It is also known as variable and it is different for different data. For example, the marks obtained by 20 students of class 8th A in a mathematics test are 30, 32, 25, 10, 40, 45, 42, 37, 38, 13, 28, 49, 29, 10, 4, 15, 24, 34, 47, 40. All the 20 students' marks entered are known as observation. Range Range is the difference between the highest and the lowest value of the collection of observation. Classes The categories in any given data is known as class. If the class interval is increased, classes will be reduced. If the class interval is decreased, the number of class will be increased. Class limit The lower number of each class is called the lower limit and the bigger number of each class is called the upper limit. On the basis of these terms, let's learn and study about tally marks. Tally marks are a quick way of keeping track of numbers in a group of five. One vertical line is made for each of the first four numbers. The fifth number is represented by a diagonal line across the previous four lines. The bars drawn to count each observation are called tally marks. Grouped Frequency Distribution table can be shown in two ways. Discrete form. In discrete form, the upper and lower limits of each class are inclusive. Continuous form. In continuous form, the lower limits of each class are inclusive and upper limit of each class are exclusive. Average or arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean, also known as average, is the ratio of the sum of all observations to the total number of observations. Average or arithmetic mean is equal to sum of all observations upon total number of observations. For example, the marks secured by a girl in her final exam in all the subjects is as shown in the table. On applying the formula of average, we will see that the average mark obtained is 84.66. Now children, we will learn and study about graphs. Let's start with bar graph. Bar graph. A bar graph is a mathematical representation of data. It is a chart that uses bars to show comparisons between categories of data. The bar graphs are usually prepared for ungrouped data. Let us draw a bar graph for how students get to school daily. See the table shown. The bar graph shown here is representing the number of students going to school by different vehicles. We will learn how to draw the bar graph. Write the title of the graph. Label the axis. Use appropriate numerical scale with equal intervals. Use equal width bars. 
keep equal space between the bars. So children, these are the steps by which we can easily draw any bar graph. Now what if a bar graph is given and you have to read it and find the required data? Here are the simple steps to read the bar graph. Understand the title of the bar graph. The title gives knowledge about the data present in the graph. Read the captions or labels along the x-axis and y-axis. This tells us about the terms. The data has been represented. Read the scale to interpret the values represented in the bar graph. The scale gives knowledge of the different lengths or heights of the bars in the graph. Now children, if you have understood the basics of a bar graph, we will try to learn and understand histogram. Histogram is a bar graph that shows the frequency of data within equal intervals. A bar graph is generally prepared for ungrouped or independent data, whereas histogram is prepared for grouped data in general. The histogram is used to represent the frequency distribution of a grouped data. Histogram is plotted by taking class intervals as the base of the rectangle. The bases of the rectangles are of equal width and they are adjacent to each other. The height of the rectangle represents their frequency distribution. We will try to understand by taking an example. From the table shown, we can see that the class limit is not real, so we will find them. Difference of upper limit of first class and lower limit of second class is equal to 11 minus 10 is equal to 1. Also, D is equal to 0 0.5. On subtracting D from lower limits and adding D to upper limits, we get the new class categories as shown here. We have created a new class with real class limits. Next, we have to construct a histogram. The steps to form the histogram are Find the lowest and highest variable in the raw data. Calculate the range. Work on the class and the class interval. Calculate the real class limits if there is a difference in the limits between the first and the second class. In short, keep in mind the real upper and lower limits of the class. Make the frequency table. Divide the horizontal axis into equal intervals for the class intervals without leaving a gap in between. Make a convenient scale on the vertical axis for frequency. The highest frequency on the table should lie on the vertical axis. Draw the bars according to the class interval and frequency. Give an appropriate title for the histogram and label the horizontal and vertical axis. Children, apart from histogram, there is another method to represent data, that is, pie chart. A pie chart is a circular chart in which the collection of information gathered by observation, measurement, research, or analysis data is displayed in the form of pie slices. It is a simple way of representing data for easy understanding, it is a circle divided into sectors. The steps to draw a pie chart are Convert the data into a percentage. Convert the percentage into degrees. Divide the circle into sectors according to the central angles. Shade each sector of the circle in a different color. Give a key to the colors provided. Give the suitable heading. So children, by following these simple steps, you can draw the pie chart of any given data. Hope you have understood the methods to represent any given data.